Hi guys, welcome to AKTV Studios, a new and improved Andrew Colden TV, Andrew your host, here to teach you guys how to create your own open PS2 loader server using Microsoft Windows XP. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using my old Dell Optiplex 780. It's not much, but it's enough to get the job done, especially if I'm going to be using an old operating system such as Microsoft Windows XP, but I'm going to be using what's called the Black Edition. So far I've added a 1 terabyte hard drive in this machine. And and so far it is good now all I have to do is turn it on and let's start this tutorial right now so far I am booting into Microsoft Windows XP and there's gonna be some programs you're gonna be needing for this tutorial you're gonna be needing a program called OPL manager and USB extreme also with WinCD MU, which is a virtualization software used to emulate ISO images as a virtual disk drive. Now, if you already have some PS2 ROMs laying around on an external USB device, you can go ahead and connect that now. Mine happens to be on this external hard drive. Now, before we can begin installing any games on your hard drive, we need to be sure that your hard drive is ready, and by that, we need to partition it. For partitioning, I happen to use a program called Wizard Partitioner. Since I currently do have a one terabyte hard drive installed on this machine, I decided to set the operating system to be at least 80 gigabytes, and with the following remaining space, I decided to create a new partition and have that be my games for the PS2 OPL. This next step in regards to network settings, we need to set the local area network as a static IP as 192.168.0.2 and the subnet as 255.255.255.0. Be sure to change the name of the partition that we created earlier as PS2 SMB and to right click on that partition under my computer and check the box where it says share my drive. This will allow you to share your drive on the network which means your PS2s will be able to communicate with it. So now that whenever we open up that uh, drive letter or partition, we notice that mine tends to have files or folders that yours doesn't. This just means that we need to go under the OPL manager and go under settings and set the OPL directory as our new partition and it will create the new folders for your games. Now notice how your new directory will now have those folders. Now next, we just have to add the games. Now we need to go ahead and run right click on an ISO image that you already have on your computer as a PS2 ROM and mount that as a virtual disk drive with WinCD MU. Now in my case, my drive letter for my game is letter G. Now we'll be using a different program called USB Extreme and this will be allow us to install the games on our hard drive such as our new partition directory. Simply go through all the settings and configurations for installing the game. In my case, I've been selecting letter G, media type as DVD, and the hard drive I have selected as E, such as my new partition, and input your game name and click start. This will install the game on your hard drive. Now for this next part of the tutorial, go ahead and go on your personal laptop or your personal computer and insert a USB device, such as a USB stick. Be sure that the speed is at 3 Point one. On your desktop computer, go ahead and open up a FAT32 formatter such as the GUI. Now under this program, select your drive letter of your USB stick that you have just inserted and go ahead and do what's called a quick format and this will format your USB drive to be what's called a FAT32 which is compatible with the PlayStation 2. Any other format will not work or any other file system, it has to be FAT32. We can continue by opening up our ESR dispatcher and Patching the game that we'll be installing on our USB stick that will have network configuration settings that will allow us to edit and add our network settings for the PlayStation 2. In this case, I'll be using a game known as ba Star Wars Battlefront 2 or SOCOM 3. Furthermore, let's go ahead and open up our OPL manager, this time on our laptop and personal computer, and let's go ahead and change the OPL directory so we can add those missing files and folders for our new USB drive. We can now follow that by opening up another program called the PS2 USB Utility, which will allow us to install games on our USB stick or drive. Go ahead and locate that ISO and set the destination to your USB stick. And this process will take a while as far as creating the game file for your USB stick for Open PS2 Loader. Now that the game has installed on your USB drive, go ahead and find a clean area so you can set up your PlayStation 
PlayStation 2s for the networking part. You're going to be needing a few things for this tutorial or this section. You're going to need some monitors, PlayStation 2s, some hacked memory cards, some video adapters, your USB drives with the games installed, a network switch, and a router. And they're all going to be set up as so. Here I have my PS2 SMB XP server, and here I have my network switch and router and PlayStation 2. They're all networked together as so and how they should be. Be sure everything is connected together and turned on. When you go to your PlayStation 2, open up the PS2 loader and have your USB drive that you created with the games installed inserted into the PlayStation 2 ports. Now we're going to go ahead and open up a game using OpenPS2 Loader using the USB method and opening up a game that will allow us to change and add our network settings. In this case, I'll be choosing and launching the game known as SOCOM 3 US Navy SEALs. This game has the network settings program that I need and I will be setting everything to automatic and saving the settings and testing the results. It will be successful since the router acts as a DHCP server, meaning every machine will have their own IP address thanks to the router. After you have saved those connection settings, go ahead and turn off the PlayStation 2 and turn it back on and let's go ahead and reopen PS2 Loader. Whenever we open up our PS2 Loader, we're going to be configuring some settings in regards to the USB fragmentation check. We're going to set that as no, and as far as the device checks, such as USB and Ethernet, we're going to set those to manual. And under your network settings of PS2 OPL, we're going to change the IP address. For PlayStation 2 number 1, it's going to be 192.168.0.10, and PlayStation 2 number 2 is going to be 192.168.0.11. Everything else should be as set as default. Now under the SMB settings, change it to IP and set it to 192.168.0.2. And be sure that the IP settings for both PlayStation 2s are set to static and not DHCP. Finally, let's go ahead and set the share name for the SMB server as all caps PS2 SMB and the username set to guest, G-U-E-S-T, all lowercase. Be sure to click the OK button and save the settings before you exit. Now go ahead and, and test it. As you can see, all the games pop up for me and these are all the games I have installed on my PS2 SMB XP game server. Now I'm going to go ahead and play two separate games on two separate PlayStation 2s, meaning the PlayStation 2s will be loading two completely separate games from the exact same server. Here it goes.